pimp, pimp, tally ho, with a zing and a zang, a hip and a hop, a stupid fresh thing, a flippity flop. Jules Guide's here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts. And uh, today we're going to talk about benches. I know why. Well, because everything's closed. I know it sounds a bit boring, but it's not. Trust me, this is going to be okay. Stop laughing. It's going to be all right. Go on, let's go. Benches, all right, go on. Memorial benches, mostly. You know, quirky, nice benches. Look. For example, this one is Franklin D. Roosevelt and Winston Churchill. This was installed in 1995. Oh my God, wait a minute. I think you're supposed to sit on his knee, you dirty rotter. You're supposed, you're supposed to have him like leaning on your shoulder. He's, he's like my friend. I'm, I'm, I'm dwarfing him a little bit. But <laughs> this, this was like a, an anniversary for the 50th anniversary of the end of World War II. And it was actually designed by a fella called Lawrence Holofcina or something. I mean, he was like a film director, a producer, a, a playwright, he did loads of stuff. But when he did this one, it became really popular. So people wanted replicas of it. So he didn't have any copies of it. So he had to come here and stand right opposite it for about five days, just re-sculpting re little kind of... I mean, just you know about sculpting science. See, you're a sculptor. That's why I thought you might like this. This sort of thing. Wait a minute, let me get out. <laughs> Excuse me. Roosevelt, he did four terms in office from 1933 to 1945. Well, he had to deal with the Great Depression and World War II. Pearl Harbor, the development of the atom bomb. I mean, you think that Boris has got a bad gig at the moment. Imagine being him. But eventually we bombed Pearl Harbor and managed to trick them into thinking that the Japanese did it. So I managed to get them into the war. <laughs> I'm sure somebody thinks that somewhere. <laughs> Now, I don't think Roosevelt would have approved of these little leg brace things on his legs here. He was actually disabled, but in most of the photos, he insisted on not having his wheelchair in it. Churchill's sort of Julieta cigar there. You can go and see the cigars that he actually brought down at the shop. There in my other video about um, ancient shops. You can see the bit <laughs> and sit in his chair and see the actual cigars that he smoked. You cannot reason with a tiger when your head is in its mouth. Usually when you see Churchill, he's depicted as this kind of quite old figure, you know, the way that we know him, you know, pretty unfit looking. But actually, he was a real dude in his youth. In the Boer War in 1899, he was sent there as a journalist and he got captured as a prisoner of war. Then he escaped and dodged his captors by jumping on a freight train and hiding in diamond mines, eventually ending up in East Africa and returning to England as a hero. It's called Allies. Allies, there they are, the special relationship. If you want an example of just how special the relationship was, when he spent Christmas at the White House once, um, Roosevelt entered the room and Churchill was completely naked. And he said, the British Prime Minister has nothing to conceal from the President of the United States. <laughs> I just want to try to whiz through these. It's just a page, it's just nice. I just think it's a nice place to have your photo taken, you know. One day on the Thames, we took a boat under the Blackfriars Bridge. And throughout the years, we kept our love afloat, messing about in the mist. We're just heading up to Soho now. I'm going through um, Savile Row, but one of the annoying things about this blasted lockdown is that I can't visit my tailor. I mean, look at the state of this jacket. My sleeve is going shiny. I've had this jacket for so long. Shocking. <laughs> it's Absolutely it's like, okay. shocking. It's, it's like tramp sleeve. I'm developing tramp sleeve. Must get to Henry Paul and Co. Soho Square. Look, now, I wasn't really going to... This bench I'm coming to see over here isn't really uh, that quirky, but... It's one that I missed out in my Soho video. Soho Square was laid out in like the 17th century. The yeah. Duke of Monmouth used to have a house here. But he's the reason that it's called Soho. Apparently he used to cry. It was his hunting cry or something. Soho! Um, he was the yet another bastard son of King Charles II. That's why probably King Charles has got a statue over there. But, you know, so look over there, that's, uh, that's Paul McCartney's music publishing thing. You know all this if you've seen my video about Soho and music. The MPL, McCartney Publishing Limited. Let's just go through here. Some of the oldest buildings in, in this square are like, along there, just next to that green one. That's actually from the 17th century, one of those buildings. And then the House of St Barnabas there, that's 18th century. Really beautifully preserved, probably one of the best preserved ones, that. But let's just quickly zip over to here. It's the Kirsty McCall bench. 
Kirsty McCall, who died in 2000. This is in reference to one of the lyrics in one of her songs. One day I'll be waiting there, no empty bench in Soho Square. And uh, people still come here on her birthday to remember her on the 10th of October. She's a very well-loved musician, isn't she? I don't know anybody that doesn't like her. Yeah, yeah exactly. She really she's is, she's uh, really revered, popular. Yeah. Of course, she's the one who sang with the Pogues on Fairy Tale of New York. I could have been someone. Well, no, so yeah. could anyone. Probably voted everybody's favourite Christmas song, right, yeah. which sadly didn't get to number one. There, there was a big, oh, really? yeah, there was this big uh, race to reach number one. You know who got there? It was the Pet Shop Boys. You were always on my mind. Oh, yeah. It was that, yeah. When that's a very good song as well. A very good uh, cover, actually. Yeah. yeah, I know, but the Pogues and Kirsty McCall. They had. Exactly. The... I'm sure it was really sad because she was with her kids down in Mexico, swimming, and then these nutters in a speedboat came past and they drove straight over her and killed her and injured one of her kids and she died in this horrific boating accident. And it turned out that the people in the boat were the multi-billionaire owners of this massive supermarket chain and they ended up blaming it on their boat hand or their helper or whatever. And he got something like two year sentence for culpable homicide. Um, which in Mexico apparently you can just uh, pay a fine instead. And so he got off. They, they didn't really see justice for it. It's really sad. She actually did a song I really liked that Tracy Allman did a cover of the song that she wrote. They don't know about us. Isn't it? They don't know about us. Since we're coming this way, I spotted one of the noses the other day. Look, here's another one of these Rick Buckley noses of Soho. Snip it out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Nose. Um, this is on the side of the milk bar in Bateman Street. Just uh, in case you're into the noses of Soho. I've talked about them in other videos. I'm not going to talk about it now. This is about benches. Let's go. We took in the sights, the London delights, including an old Roman bar. The world rolled on by in the blink of an eye. Joseph Basil Jet Laugh, Laugh. Easily my favourite bench. This is Spike Milligan's bench. Amazing. He was born in 1918 and he's widely regarded as the godfather of alternative comedy. I suppose he became most famous for The Goon Show but during the 50s, 60s, I think, which they say inspired Monty Python. But um, So he was actually, he's Irish, but born in India. They've got all these lovely details all over the bench. The classic thing was when he finally got awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award, Jonathan Ross was doing the presentation. He said, oh, also, Spike, we've got a very special guest has written to you and um, it turned out that Prince Charles was a big fan of the Goon Show and he started reading out this letter saying Spike I've been a massive fan of yours ever since uh, growing up and uh, I've always loved the Goon Show and, Show, and particularly of Spike Milligan. Oh the little groveling bastard. <laughs> In front of everybody on live TV Spike Milligan goes Ah, oh, that little grovelling bastard. <laughs> it's on YouTube, you can see it. It's a really classic moment. He also wrote, I think it was voted, the favourite children's poem. On the Ning Nang Nong, where the cows go bong and the monkeys all say boo. There's a Nong Nang Ning, where the trees go ping and the teapots jibber jabber joo. In the Nong Ning Nang, all the mice go clang, and you just can't catch them if they do. So it's Ning Nang Nong, cows go bong, Nong Nang Ning, trees go ping, Nong Ning Nang, mice go clang. What a noisy place to belong is the Ning Nang Ning Nang Nong. <laughs> on his gravestone, he wanted them to write, I told you I was ill. <laughs> it really feels like a magical, magical bench. I mean, I think some of the characters on here are from the goons. And which one's Harry Seacombe? He famously said, when Harry Seacombe died of cancer, he said, well, I'm glad he died first, so he couldn't sing at my funeral. <laughs> What's your favourite Spike Milligan poem? Smile, because it's very appropriate for the yes. times. Yes, smiling is infectious. You catch it like the flu. When someone smiled at me today, I started smiling too. I passed around a corner and someone saw my grin. When he smiled, I realised I'd passed it on to him. I thought about that smile, then I realised it's worth. A single smile, just like mine, could travel round the earth. So if you feel a smile begin, don't leave it undetected. Let's start an epidemic quick and get the world infected. What a grovelly old bastard. London, we spent our lives I love that building, the, the kind of Batman style, Gotham City. It's a Freemason's Lodge. People keep asking me to make a film about these Freemason's Lodges around London, but um, it's not that easy just to stroll in and say, hi, I'm making a film about these places. So it can be a bit tricky. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Your ceremony here. <laughs> Julia from Jules, guys. Oh, yes. Look at this. 
whilst we're talking about 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 benches you know what they, they, they just it's not really a memorial bench or anything it just shows how nice camden are they've deliberately created these so that homeless people can't sleep on them and it's like it's a bit mean isn't it really so all that's happened is that they've ended up sleeping in that doorway instead well you could uh, join them i mean you look the part mate with that jacket <laughs> cheeky smile Door shut. Do you need to make a phone call or something? <laughs> no, but I needed a piss. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just keep walking. It's not open, unfortunately. So you're usually behind the church there, St Paul's in Covent Garden. One of my heroes, John Thor, <laughs> from the Sweeney, has his bench in the garden there. But I love the Sweeney. Yeah. <laughs> you know John Thor smoked since he was 12? It kind of shows, doesn't it? You, you can see it in the Sweeney. He looks like he's like uh, 50. You know? yeah. like in his... Eventually died of cancer of the esophagus. Brilliant actor. A lot of these benches are memorial benches here. But anyway, yeah, John Thor, the Sweeney. He's got one of these. And of course, it's called the Actors' Church. Yeah, there's loads of memorials for actors inside. Vivian Lee, Noel Coward, Charlie Chaplin, of course. Charlie Chaplin, you remember we went there with yes. Charlie Chaplin's grandchildren yes. in our video. It like everything, it's closed. Nice, nice little spot to have your sandwiches in there. We're in Charing Cross. That is Charing Cross, one of the crosses erected by King Edward I. Yes. Well, I mean, that's actually a replica of it. It was originally over there. But you know, the, the, the cross of the 13, was it 13 crosses? He, he erected them between Lincoln and London along the funeral cortege of his dead wife. Yeah, National Gallery over there, Trafalgar Square, and over here, <laughs> we've got, well, i got to admit, I'm not that fond of it. I love Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde's great, but I've never liked this. It's actually supposed to look like a sarcophagus. The idea is a conversation with Oscar Wilde, and he's, he's supposed to be emerging from his sarcophagus to invite you to come and have a conversation with him. Okay. He's smoking as well. Is it Lady Windermere's fan? We are all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. Yeah, people keep trying to nick bits off him. I think they nicked the cigarette. Looks like they've returned it now. Strictly speaking, this should be a pure gold-tipped cigarette from, from James Fox, you know, the, the cigar shop that we went to. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's in my other video about ancient shops. So I suppose one of the reasons why he smoked gold-tipped cigarettes was uh, because he said he could do without the necessities in life. It was the superfluous that he couldn't do without. <laughs> so, there's a history of people nicking bits off him. Well, not this one, but his actual grave over in Père Lachaise, over in France, is where he's buried. There's an angel or something on the grave right. and apparently it had huge testicles. <laughs> so, well, huge genitals, anyway. And, it, and so I, I think people nick them and now they're used as paperweights in the office of the, of the cemetery. So they've had to put a big fence up around his grave. Stop people nicking bits. Nicking bits. I don't think you can nick this cigarette. That, that actually looks like his portrait of Dorian Gray yeah. <laughs> after it's been affected by all the, uh, the sin. But a bench, is it supposed to be a bench? Yes, it's supposed to enc en encourage you to come and sit here, except there's usually quite a lot of urine around here. I mean, yeah, there's, a, there's yeah. one of those toilets, every toilets that pops yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not, it just doesn't feel like the sort of place you're going to sit and enjoy a chat, <laughs> I must say. <laughs> Well, I, I quite agree, Oscar, yes. Well, of course, uh, one cannot live until one has died. Oh, I wish I had said that. You will, Oscar, you will. In winter it's snowing, in summer it's glowing. You have ten seconds to comply. I no, like these. It's gonna blow! <laughs> it's gonna blow! I like these, uh, the, these things, um, the, the, the new countdown on the... Uh, in America, they've got walk and don't walk. Don't they have a fight in one of the Superman films? The Superman 3. Yeah. yeah, all of the computers run wild, and then the, uh, the don't walk red man <laughs> climbs up oh, yeah. into the green walk man yeah. and punches them to death. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Super Superman for you. Yeah. <laughs> Whilst we're on our way down here to the embankment, might as well just remind everybody, please to subscribe to the Jules Guys channel by hitting the subscribe button and the bell next to it. If you want, yeah. to, be, uh, if you want to be notified when a new video gets uploaded, you hit the bell and that should do it. Because if I go to the BBC, for example, and I say, hey, listen, I want to be on Strictly, 
um, they'll say, oh yeah, well, how many subscribers do you have? That, that, that's how they, they won't say how many views have you got. They'll say how many subscribers have you got? So that's why it's important to hit the subscribe button so I can get on Strictly no. next year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I want to. And, uh, and also, if you could follow me on my Instagram, which is at Jules Guides Official. Yeah, I was just thinking of like benches where famous people have sat on, mm. Beatles, you know, band, you know, musicians. We did go to that one which the Beatles sat on in their Mad Day Out. Remember my Beatles video? It's in St Pancras Gardens. Yeah, we're here on the embankment. Look, you see all these beautiful fishes. Fish, fishes? What do you prefer? Fish or fishes? Anyway. Are they fishes? They're, I think they're sturgeons. When they narrowed the river and reclaimed all this land, they wanted to make everything look wonderful. And so they, they, they called this architect, this bloke, he was in charge of designing all this stuff. His name was George Vuillarmi, and he made all the lampposts blend in with the sort of water theme. And then he drew inspiration from Egypt with the sphinxes on the benches. He actually did these before he preempted this uh, Cleopatra's needle arriving, because these were put here in like, 1877 and the needle arrived the next year in 1878. Because we're now entering the old city of London, or the city of London, that's what he represents. It means that further along here they become camel benches up here. I mean it's hard to tell whether they're camels or dromedaries. You can't see them. In my London lockdown video where I walk along the river I, I talk about Cleopatra's needle and how it was brought over from Egypt. And then that's what these are all supposed to blend in with. It's kind of in keeping with the Egyptian theme. And I foolishly mention camel benches being something to do with the First World War and the, the, the African core, but it, it wasn't. That was a mistake by me. I do make mistakes sometimes, just to test you, of course. Anyway, they're all just to blend in with uh, Cleopatra's needle there. I believe. Don't write in. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, don't comment. Yeah, I, I just, I just pointing them out. It's, it's, it's tough. It's not easy doing all this. We're on Blackfriars Bridge. This is the one under which they found that guy Roberto Calvi hanging. With, bricks tied around his ankles and money in his pockets. Anyway, it's just got quite a nice uh, benches here. <laughs> it sounds, feels so weird talking about benches, but, but no, these are based on the pulpits um, in churches or in monasteries, back in the days when there used to be a monastery around here, the Blackfriars Monastery. It's supposed to be the pulpits. Oh, that's, that's what they're referring to here, yeah. Uh, well, this is a bench of sorts, oh, isn't it? Look, it's a bench. Yes, yes. And um, in fact, there was that other one that we went to, um, which I think I shall cut to now, down near London, Guy's Hospital. London town, we spent our lives larking around London town. Now this alcove, which has got John Keats sitting in it, look, this used to have, um, this used to be on the old London Bridge, the old medieval London Bridge, which stood there for like six, seven hundred years. And when they demolished London Bridge in 1831, they saved some of these little alcoves. Now, there are only four of them remain. And down there, actually, just in New Common Street, there's another part of the old London Bridge, just a kind of like a badge. It's above the King's Arms pub. We're not going to go down there, but it's just around the corner, just down there a little bit further. Was Keats a hobbit? Why are they making it so small, like a hobbit? Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> How bizarre. That could be a, a thumbnail. Oh <laughs> there was a naughty boy, and a naughty boy was he. He ran away to Scotland, the people for to see. There he found that the ground was as hard, that a yard was as long, where the song was as merry, that a cherry was as red, the lead was as weighty, that four score was as eighty, that a door was as wooden as in England. So he wondered. He stood in his shoes and he wondered. <laughs> really nice around here. I mean much nicer than it used to be in Victorian times where um, this is where Bill Sykes falls to his death at the end of Oliver Twist. But it's not where Fagin lives as I stupidly said in my video about Rotherhithe last time. So we're heading up to Rotherhithe. Fagin lived up in uh, Saffron Hill. <laughs> but I only said it because there's a bloody plaque from the local council here stating that Fagin lived around here and he totally didn't. Very annoying. They've got a plaque there. But it is where Bill Sykes died. Anyway, we're heading to Rotherhithe. Come on. Now we're just approaching Rotherhithe. Rotherhithe comes from uh, Rodehia or something, which means landing place for cattle in Anglo-Saxon. 
And just over here is Alfred Salter, who was a much-loved MP back in the 1920s. This whole ensemble here of statues and this fellow on the bench is, is it's known as Salter's Dream. Now, Alfred Salter was a doctor originally who lived near here, and he entered politics in order to help improve living conditions for the poor. And, of course, being a doctor, he saw the effect that living in slums had on people's health, and he set up mutual health insurance schemes, started treating people for free, and together with his wife, they worked on improving conditions in the Bermondsey slums by building houses like those that we saw in Wilson Grove around the corner. There used to be a, another version of him, but someone stole him. I don't know, I don't know what, but I felt a bit sorry for him because the other one, he looked a lot more comfortable. He was sort of reclined on a nice bench. His wife over there, Ada, she is one of the only 20 statues of women in London. She's carrying a spade because she campaigned to get some of the public spaces turned into playgrounds for children. Ada's concern for working women led to her election in 1909 as the first woman councillor in Bermondsey and the first Labour woman councillor in London. This must be the daughter who died of scarlet fever. Some say that her death could have been avoided if they had taken her out of the school here and sent her to a posh place elsewhere, but they decided to stay living in amongst the, the slums here in Bermondsey. But unfortunately, it didn't do her any good and she ended up dying. As for the cats, I think that's just her cat. <laughs> Now, of course, I haven't been able to cover all the benches I wanted to because there's like COVID on and everything's in lockdown. It's difficult to get around. But if you do find a bench that you really like, don't forget to take a photo and tag me on Instagram at Jules Guides Official. And there was only one bench really where it felt appropriate that I could finish. And that's on the one for my dad and my brother. <laughs> cheers, everybody. Uh, socially distance cheers, Simon. Cheers. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the music to this video, you can buy it on Little. Lostloo.com. See you next time, folks.